What steps do you take to pick the best remedy after repertorization? And how do you prescribe an unknown new remedy with confidence? One common question I've gotten in my Argentum survey is how do you prescribe a constitutional remedy at stage three? How do you learn the metromedic of a remedy, especially when it's a new unknown remedy? So for some reason, our brains tend to ignore new unknown remedies that come up in our repertorization, and we try to stay within what's known and what's familiar, and that's normal. But if you give yourself the permission to explore uncharted remedies, you will make a huge difference between good enough and a dramatic outcome for your patient. And along the way, you will expand your remedy toolkit. Not just that, your results will speak for themselves and boost your homeopathic practice. And for this reason, I'm demonstrating a case study that has been submitted by my student in the Argentum Mentoring Portal recently. This is part three, where we'll be researching the potential remedy that strongly matches our patient's case. Now, the remedy that came up for our patient is the damselfly. This is a new unknown remedy for many of us. And hence, I'll be showing you how to research a new remedy, how to study its materia medica using my simple, powerful stages template. Plus, we will check the follow-ups to see how it works in real practice. If you've missed part one and two, where I cover the crucial case-taking and case analysis process to reach the remedy, please check those parts before you go ahead with this one. If you've watched those parts one and two, Let's dive in. Okay, so let's go and look at, you know, the damselfly proving uh, by Jeremy and Camilla from the Dynamic Provings. So here is what he writes. He talks about what happened before the proving. Camilla and I had taken the remedy 40 seconds earlier and what we were suffering, it was very quick. So they had an intense sort of allergic reaction the sinuses filled up, the nose is blocked, congestive headache, and, um, you know, the loudest sneezing. And in a way, it proved his theory that insects with short lifespans would suit rapid acute diseases. So this is a rapid acting acute state condition remedy, right? And he's used it for if influenza, hay fever, and sinusitis, but any form of intense acute states would do well on this particular remedy. Now, the dragon or damselfly lives as a nymph under the water, and this insect has inhibited our planet for 400 million years. So they're one of the oldest creatures on Earth, and it's a beautiful insect, amazing flying skills, capture your imagination, and he was attracted to prove it on a summer's day in Finland, watching the vivid blues and greens and silvers hovering over the sea. Just a bit about the kingdom, animal kingdom, Anthropoda, insect class, Adonata, and the family is Chiloptrygidae. Now, one of the unusual traits about odonates is that the habitats are two complete different ones. The larva is in water, and as an adult, they are flying insects. Now, there's some interesting bit Jeremy's given about the connection with, you know, mythology and old tales. In the ancient Mesopotamia world, the eggs of Odonata were used to treat menstrual pains. In Europe, they considered threatening and being associated with the devil. In, in America, it's a superstition that the devil uses them to weigh a person's soul. And when the dragonfly flies over your head, you should expect serious punishment. So it's about mischief and punishment. In Japan, it's a symbol of success, victory, happiness, courage, and strength. In China, they used in medicine, it's said to cure syphilis and promote sexual prowess. So we have tons and tons of information about damselfly. And what I'm going to do is, we're going to pick the information in this proving at stage three because that is what we need for our patients. So here is my concise distillation of the understanding of stage three in the light of what we have in our patient. So this is what I could derive from the proving. The power of light. 
They're very emotional and passionate in early years. So this is based on the constitutional evolutionary understanding. They learn to balance and find the mental clarity and control as they grow. So there is a tendency to emotionally shut down because of emotional issues in early life. It's always a conflict between are you too rational? Are you not keeping the color of emotion alive? They need warmth and light. And like many other insects, there's this need to transform and shifting the color, the energy, form and movement explodes into the mind of the observer, being, bringing vague memories of a time or a place where magic reigned. There is a drug-like state in this remedy. The messengers of wisdom, enlightenment and communication bringing light with its fiery breath. So at stage three, we basically divide the stage three symptoms into two poles and then we find the balance between them. So let's understand the two poles from the proving. On one hand, you have this intense anxiety and panic. You have the trembling, the shaking, the startling, the oversensitive, the high energy, the need for stimulation, somebody's behind me, high on stimulants, high on libido, sex, sensuality, the buzzing, the vibration, the coffee, the need, you no know, sounds are too strong, noise goes through me, she says, music, flying, colors, fire, flame, industrious, productive, accomplishment, voicing her opinions. So fire, flame and light. Some provers experienced a a situation where the experience was I got burnt inside from my own flame, from my own fire. So separated from my family and other lights in life. So there's a lot of fire in that way and a lot of heat and a lot of stimulation and need to really expand that, expel that energy out. And that's why she needs to run because that is the fire in her belly that really intensely radiates out. And on the other pole, there is this heavy stasis, clumsy, small, imposed upon. She's unappreciated and judged, ungrounded, and completely apathetic, indifference, inertia, death and dying. Those were the years when she was with her boyfriend, completely alone, disconnected, detached, distant and withdrawn, weeping, overwhelmed into tears. So these are the two poles. And what she needs is the balance. And this is about her transformation. This is why she rebelled. This is why she wanted to run away from home. This is what she's escaping into. Wants to find alignment, left, right, center orientation. That comes up in the proving very strongly. The need for energy, but the flow. Well-being and calmness, cheerful joy, happiness and light. The balance of the fire element, the passion, the creativity, the accomplishments, the desires with the water elements, the flow, the calm, the well-being, the peace, reducing those fears. And this is the balance that we're looking for between the fire and the water. The carefree, being at peace with the world and my surroundings, connect and communicate. That is what we're looking to offer her through the damselfly. So Calopteryx splendens LM3. Let's see what happens. So she comes back in week one and she writes to my student, the first few days I felt agitated, like I didn't know what I wanted and what to do with myself. Everything and everyone was annoying me. I had only one dream that I can remember but it was not a bad dream. So that was what she wrote in that first week's follow-up. We didn't repeat the remedy. We wait and watch because the remedy has registered. She says, the last few days, I've noticed that I feel better. I can't really explain. I've definitely felt a lift, more focused, looking at ways of bettering myself. I have a better outlook and feeling more positive. I'm thinking differently with a slight different mindset. As long as I'm not faced with a stressful situation, I seem to be feeling a lot better. So this alignment is slowly happening and sinking in for her. So we still wait and watch. And she continues. 
She says, thank you so much. I'm certainly feeling more positive, which is amazing. I just hope it continues. I've also noticed the fuzziness is less intense. My mornings are improved. Remember, she gets up in the morning with this heavy thinking in her chest. And that's now lifting off. It's strange because I'm unfamiliar with feeling okay. She's been suffering for 40 years or more. And this is what just three weeks of a few doses has done for her. And that is the beauty when, you know, somebody's at stage three could go at that level. And then we find a remedy, Damatra Medica, that really matches them at that core. Not every patient we can, you know, do that. But if when we do and we look outside the box, we can find some deeper changes for a patient which they deserve. Then she, she continues to keep. So we, we always ask our patients to keep diaries, dream diaries and write to us every week for the first few weeks. She says, I've had a few days, good days. Friday was very positive. I didn't really want it to end. I really noticed a difference. However, over the weekend, it has worn off. I'm feeling down and disheartened. So the action of the remedy is now sizzling off, right? This is the time to repeat. So we repeat the same remedy in the same dose and the same potency because it has registered and really done some deep work here. So after a month of that, she says, I just had to let you know I'm feeling better at the moment. It's so amazing that I can actually feel more positive, loving the feeling. I'm just let's hope it lasts. I can't explain the joy I feel. It gives me hope. Now, this also helps the student because he says, this is why I do homeopathy. I've reassured her that if symptoms return or if the improvement wears off, then we simply repeat the remedy or go up in potency if we need to and take it from there. She's very good at keeping in touch. And this is also what your patients do. Once they understand that what homeopathy can do for them, they will follow up. They will come back. They will write to you regularly because they want to actually get the best out of homeopathy as well. And if you work with them in a partnership, this can go and, you know, complete the resolution for them. Now, this was the last follow-up that he submitted onto the website. The thing is, this is still work in progress, right? A couple of doses that are just two months since the remedy has been given will not change her overnight. There would be some blocks that come up. She's been on a, a lot of suppression in the past. There is a lot of strong family history, so she will need some antimyosmetics and she might need some hormone blockbusters. But we'll come to it when, you know, the time comes. But at this moment, you just have to enjoy the process. Take it one step at a time. But this case was just a demonstration to show you how you can, these are typical cases. These will be your bread and butter cases in your practice. So you need to be able to give them the best of homeopathy at every follow-up. And that's the way to go from here. So this is our plan. We get the best out of the remedy. If symptoms return or if improvement wears off, we simply repeat the remedy or we go up in potency if the indications remain the same. If indications change, which they might in the coming months, then we just use appropriate blockbusters. If we just use appropriate remedies, targeted remedies to remove and peel those issues and blocks as they come up, I call them my handbrakes. And then we continue with this remedy and keep the acceleration on. So if you want to see how you follow up cases after you are finished up, you know, with that first important stage three or four prescription, then you have to check my video where I showed you the case study of grave disease. Again, in a similar age group with intense anxiety, where I show you the detailed follow-ups and the process of how you use those secondary prescriptions. And that case has been followed up for a year. So hope you understand this process and um, let's go give the best of homeopathy for our patients through this. So that's broadly the way you should study a new remedy. You select a potency, you make the key decisions that come up during follow-up. Now, if you've enjoyed this video and this case taking process, if you want to learn more on how to use the stages template to simplify your case management in your patients, check out this short playlist over here. If you want to get, you know, 30, 
40 such reliable Hanimanian provings, then I highly encourage you to check Jeremy's Dynamic Provings Volume 1 and 2. You can use them through your free HomeOquest software. I'll put the links below. Take care.